Hank Earl Carr was born on January 31st, 1968. According to family, Hank was a smart child. He began walking sooner than most kids and was already reading by the time he turned three. Hank had a close relationship with both his parents, even after their divorce when he was a toddler. When his mother eventually remarried, she moved young Hank to Bradenton, Florida with his new stepfather. When Hank began school, it quickly became evident that he had trouble behaving. Somehow, this never affected his grades and he excelled in his studies. But still, his disruptive and mischievous nature was becoming a problem. After seeing a doctor at the age of seven, Hank was diagnosed with ADHD and prescribed Ritalin, a medication commonly used to treat the disorder. This seemed to do the trick. After a while, Hank's behavior improved and he was getting into trouble less and less. His mother enrolled him into various after-school activities in an effort to keep him busy. Hank took to this well and appeared to finally be back on the right track. However, these sharp improvements would be short-lived. As a teenager, Hank's family moved to the city of Inglewood, Florida. By now, Hank had somewhat slipped back into his old ways. He gained a reputation as a school bully, getting into fights regularly and taking money from other students. It was around this time that Hank's doctor chose to take him off the Ritalin. Hank's mother disagreed with this decision, but nonetheless, he was taken off the medication. It wouldn't be long after this that Hank got arrested for the first time. He was charged with public intoxication and theft. Feeling that she was at her wit's end, Hank's mother gave him an ultimatum abide by her rules or leave her home altogether. Being the egotistical teenager he was, Hank chose the latter, and at the age of 16, he became homeless. Hank would sleep where he could and rely on stealing to feed himself. Slowly but surely, he sank deeper into a life of petty crime. This would lead to a string of prison terms. Hank's charges ranged from burglary and assault to drug possession and threats. Now a young adult, his life had taken the same dark turn that his loved ones feared it might. Despite Hank's aggressive and violent nature, he was said to have been a ladies man. He could sweep a woman off her feet with little to no effort. Old love interests say that he was very charming when he wanted to be, but once the relationship began, he would turn into a different person. In one case, then-girlfriend Belinda Simpson filed a restraining order against Hank. This came just a few months after the two began dating. It was alleged that Hank had beat her young son to the point of injury after catching him jumping on the couch. Another girlfriend, Evelyn Sachs, accused Hank of beating her regularly. And after their relationship produced a baby girl, Evelyn found out that Hank had given her an STD. She'd eventually find herself pregnant again, this time with the baby boy. However, prior to giving birth, she discovered that Hank was seeing another woman. Her name? was Bernice Bowen. This would result in Evelyn packing up and leaving town with the couple's daughter and soon-to-be son. She'd give birth to their baby boy eventually, but Hank would never meet him. Hank and Bernice relocated to the city of Tampa, Florida. Bernice held down two jobs to support the family. This included a day gig at Kmart and a night job as an exotic dancer. Meanwhile, Hank stayed home and tended to her two children, a boy named Joey who was four and a girl named Kayla who was six. Hank's relationship with Bernice seemed to mirror his previous ones. Co-workers recall many times that Bernice came to work with black eyes and other injuries. Though family and friends would beg her to leave Hank, she said that she was in love with him and that he was great with her children. Their relationship went on, but things would come to a tragic conclusion on May 19, 1998. For Hank, Bernice, and the kids, this was supposed to be a fun day. The four had planned to go swimming, eat some goodies, and enjoy the warm Florida weather. Unfortunately, they would never make it. Shortly before 10 a.m., Bernice and Hank frantically pulled up to a Tampa fire station. In the back seat was Bernice's son, Joey. He had a gunshot wound to the head. Though fire personnel made an attempt to save Joey, their efforts were futile and the young boy passed away. In the midst of all this, Hank drove back to he and Bernice's home. Police would arrive shortly thereafter and take him down to headquarters. Hank would initially say that the shooting was accidental. 
He claimed that Joey had been dragging his shotgun around when the weapon fired. However, Hank would then change his story and say that he had been putting the shotgun away when a round went off. Wanting to verify Hank's account, police decided to take him back to the home he shared with Bernice. Officer Ricky Childers and Randy Bell would transport Hank to and from. They made it to the home without incident, but on the way back to the station, Hank, who had been cuffed in the front, was able to get out of his handcuffs. Now free of restraints, Hank was able to take Officer Childers' weapon and shoot him point blank in the head. When Officer Bell attempted to subdue Hank, he was also shot and killed. As Hank jumped out of the police vehicle, he fired indiscriminately at passing motorists. He'd end up hitting one man, a truck driver named Chris Espinoza. Though Chris survived, he required major surgery to recover. Following this, Hank stole a small pickup truck and fled the scene. He managed to make one stop at his mother's house before heading towards the state of Ohio. Here, he planned to see his daughter one last time. But much to Hank's disappointment, he was spotted just half an hour after starting his trip. Highway patrolman James Crooks would be the one to give chase after seeing the stolen pickup truck pass him by. He pursued for about 10 minutes before Hank suddenly stopped, got out, and opened fire. Tragically, patrolman Crooks would lose his life after catching two of those bullets. Hank then re-entered the stolen pickup and continued to flee. By now, there was an all-out manhunt in progress. Officers were pursuing Hank on the ground as well as from above. As he crossed into a neighboring county, authorities had a spike strip waiting for him. Hank ran right into the trap. With punctured tires, he had no choice but to pull over. He rolled into a shell service station where he managed to take one hostage, 27-year-old Stephanie Kramer. There would now be a standoff as officers negotiated with Hank for Stephanie's release. It would take four long and grueling hours, but he would finally let her go. With this, police moved in and tossed tear gas bombs into the building. Upon entering, they found Hank's lifeless body. He had a self-inflicted gun wound to the head. In the aftermath, the Tampa police mourned the loss of the three officers, all of whom were highly regarded in their departments. Bernice Bowen, who refused to help police upon Hank's arrest and escape, was hit with several charges, including child neglect, aiding and abetting, and accessory to murder. She received a 21-year sentence, and in 2016, she was released from prison. Though it's been more than two decades since the tragedy, May 19, 1998, has gone down as one of the darkest days in Florida history. Thanks for watching. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. If you found this story interesting, click here to check out another case.